Hello, and thank you for joining us for Solidarity Sunday. This service demonstrates our commitment to the world's vulnerable people as we stand alongside local churches who are on the front lines acting as the hands and feet of Jesus. It is also a time for us to reaffirm and proclaim our shared commitment to expressing the gospel through both word and deed. Like me, you've probably been saddened at recent events around the globe. There is no doubt that we live in a broken world. We all long to see an end to conflict and violence, and the arrival of God's shalom, His grace combined with peace, restoring and reconciling all things to Himself. Even as we work at being bearers of His shalom, we do so remembering that God's Spirit is fully present and continues to move and to work amongst us. What a joy it is to be able to say yes to His call to care for our world with generosity and compassion. Solidarity Sunday is also a chance for us to rejoice that the Lord does not leave us in times of trouble. His promises are true, and together we can wholeheartedly join Him in the work of bringing hope, healing, and reconciliation to all people. And now let's begin our service by giving thanks that the peace of Christ rules in our hearts, since as members of one body, we are called to peace.
John 16, 16 to 33. Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. At this, some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? They kept asking, What does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman who gives birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice. No one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive. Your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then the disciples said, now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you now believe? Jesus replied, A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. While Jesus and his disciples were about to cross over the Kidron Valley and make their way up to the Mount of Olives, into the darkness of Gethsemane's garden, Jesus resumes a conversational style of communication with his disciples. The conversation brings in a lot of concern for the disciples because in verse 16, Jesus says, A little while you will see me no more, and a little while you will see me. The disciples immediately pick up the phrase, a little while. And the imperative tense here says that they kept on asking themselves as to what Jesus meant by these words. The key to understand verse 16 is found in the Greek language. A little while you shall not see me. The Greek for see in this phrase is theorete, meaning to be a spectator, to view mentally, to view attentively. During the interval between Jesus' death and resurrection, the disciples lost their faith, spiritual vision, and thus could not see Jesus attentively. 
Secondly, a little while you shall see me. The Greek word for see in this phrase is obsesste, meaning to comprehend. The disciples after the Israel after the resurrection began to comprehend Jesus more in a spiritual sense. So Jesus is actually telling his disciples, as you are not aware of the times, you shall not attentively view me. But when you later realize the times, you will comprehend me. Jesus explains to his disciples that they would experience a time of mourning and grieving, while the world will rejoice to see the end of Jesus. However, Jesus says, your sorrow will be turned into joy after bearing all the hardships, the trials and tribulations. Two things have to be noted here. Number one, nowhere does Jesus say that their sorrows would be replaced by joy. Rather, they will have sorrows and then follows joy. The experience, secondly, the experience of joy is based on Jesus seeing his disciples. Jesus seeing them after the post-resurrection appearances. And here, the kind of atmosphere that is created between Jesus and the disciples. For the disciples, Jesus happens to be or becomes to be the person who they could have comfort. Jesus, through his name, through his understanding, becomes a source where he touches them, he holds them, he gives them the assurance of grace, and he loves them. Yes, in his name, Jesus becomes the means of joy. And to pray in Jesus' name means an acceptance of the process by which God works and in which Jesus relied upon. That process is the cross and the resurrection. That is a cross which represents the end, the hopelessness of everything else and a resurrection beyond it to bring in victory. As Jesus teaches these, he tells his disciples that the hour has come when they in the world will have tribulations. Tribulation, the Greek word thlipsis, has the idea of pressure, being pressed hard. The disciples of Jesus were called on the carpet by the Jewish Sanhedrin and put under immense pressure. They were pressed hard to stop teaching in Jesus' name. They were arrested more than once and beaten up. Except for the elder John in exile, all the disciples were martyred. This was the tribulation of the disciples. So does it mean that the end result of being a disciple of Jesus is failure? Not so. Jesus says, Take courage, for in me you have peace. Verse 33. He promises a peace which passes all understanding. An understanding to coexist with tribulations and disturbances. It is a peace which is realized in and through conflict and struggle. Tribulation will not be replaced by joy, but in Christ we experience peace in these challenging situations with the assurance of overcoming these tribulations like Jesus conquered the world on the cross. Yes, in Jesus, we are touched, we are held, we are assured of grace, we are loved, we are comforted. My peace I give to you. How does this passage speak to us? While a majority of people and nations are concerned about their safety, 
protection, comfort, status, honor, pride, wealth, and so on. We also see people, nations that are struggling to survive. Those who were once free are now refugees. They now struggle for food and shelter. Very few have come to help. Very few walk along. Elsewhere, many Christians are discriminated and oppressed based on their caste. They are identified as rice Christians, that is, teased for converting to Christianity because of rice. There is a growing division based on religion. Church structures and services are obstructed. There are times members are beaten up by the other dominant. I live in a society where we hear the cries of many young girls in the clutches of human trafficking. Little children deprive of better education because of their community. Young widows living in uncertainty and are not sure of the next meal for their children. The list can go on. Looking at our realities, we could say, hearts have become heavy, cries have stopped, only silence has remained. Seldom there are acts of assistance and justice. Many are pressed hard and are choking. The early Christians too had their own share of tribulation. They were burned to death. They were killed by wild animals for the Roman entertainment. Their bodies were lit up as lights for night games, all for their faith. But the greatest thing here is the early Christians comprehended Jesus. They comprehended Jesus and they had the courage, the peace to face tribulations. The assurance that stands then is the same assurance that stands today for those who are pressed hard and are choking. But note Jesus does not say that their tribulation will be removed by joy. Rather, Joy follows tribulation. Joy indeed is based on the martyrdom of Jesus' disciples and others who followed Jesus. It brought the universal church. Today we need to ask ourselves, have we not analyzed the times to attentively consider Jesus? Or have we understood the times to comprehend Jesus? Or how does the church, the very body of Christ, tend to see Jesus? Or how does the church see the world? When Jesus sees his disciples, he brings joy in the midst of sorrow. Let us ask ourselves, has the church left? Or is the church still present in this society, allowing the Holy Spirit to dwell and breathe through to say, take courage. The peace of Jesus Christ is given to you in the midst of sorrow and suffering. Eleanor Roosevelt says, it, it, it isn't enough to talk about peace. One, man, one must believe in it and it isn't enough to believe in it. One must work at it. There is more that needs to be done. There are many more who still need to realize to shift from being a mere spectator to being a provider of peace of Jesus Christ for which it is imperative to dwell in, the, in Christ. In the midst of a hostile situation, in the midst of other powers and tribulations. 
Therefore, it is compulsory that we need to pray to the Father in Jesus' name, which gives us wisdom to walk in the ways of the Lord and to be strengthened to experience joy in our tribulations. The assurance lies in Jesus' very own victory over suffering and death. Let the peace of God which passes all understanding come through the church by touching, by holding, by praying, by being there, giving the assurance of grace, loving them, comforting them, so that the ever transforming power of Jesus Christ may prevail in the many lives of those experiencing tribulation. My peace I give to you. Have courage in this world. May the good God be with us and bless us. Amen.
For the past uh, eight years, we have seen uh, God at work in Lebanon through the local church, specifically after the refugees, the Syrian refugees crisis due to the civil war in Syria. Uh, we have seen the church in Lebanon step out and uh, go the extra mile to support uh, the refugees in Lebanon through medical assistance, food assistance, or any kind of assistance they can present. Uh, the church in Lebanon has also been supporting uh, the most needy families in Lebanon since the start of the economic crisis in 2019. Um, we can see uh, the amazing work also uh, done in the Middle East through the local churches in Egypt, in Sudan, specifically after the economic crisis and the political crisis hit the country, the church has stepped out and uh, been playing uh, the role of uh, agent of peace in their communities, also supporting the needy families that have uh, um, lost either their jobs or their income due to the economic crisis. We have seen the amazing work that the church in Syria has been doing for the past few years, supporting displaced people. And now with the efforts of rebuilding, uh, the church in Syria is doing an amazing work, supporting the families that have lost their homes and rebuilding their homes to be able to relocate. Um, the, not only the local church in our area, but we can see also the work done by the global church, supporting the local churches in the MENA region. We are thankful for the amazing work that's been uh, done and we are thankful for God's work in our region. When the media draws our attention to the broken part of this world, the truth of the word of God is drawing us back to focus on God and his word. Peace is not about how we feel. It belongs to God's character. So whenever I meditate on God's words, I experience God's peace. Even the unrest situation out there is still keep happening. But I can always see God's peace through his work and the message he passed to us. Besides, I also see God's peace through the action of God's people when they respond to the crisis happening around the world. I read in the book saying, when we are faithful to the purpose that God made us, the image that God gave us, we will definitely do something to embrace this broken world. So when I see the churches and the organizations care for the most vulnerable people in the world and try their best to provide help and comfort to them, I can see God's hands are upon those who are in need and see God's peace in this broken world. We are living in a world torn by all types of calamities, both natural and man-made. While we were hardly recovering from COVID-19, the world is once more shaken by news of war in Ukraine, South Sudan, DR Congo, and other parts of the world. Politicians and scientists have tried their best but they have proved to be inadequate. In the midst of all those tribulations, however, our only hope of peace is in God in accordance with his promise in Matthew chapter 12, verse 26, where he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let us rely on him. As we listen and watch the world news today, we know that COVID continues to negatively impact life for people around the world. Could it be any worse? Some of our CBM colleagues around the world consider COVID to be a rather minor problem compared to all the other pressing challenges that they're dealing with today. Now the world is facing the unimaginable situation of war in the Ukraine and its devastating results on its people. Where can we see or experience God's peace in this broken world today? Well, what is God's peace? Jesus, in his final days of ministry on earth, speaks to his disciples about what they will be experiencing after he has physically left them and encourages them, reminding them of what they need to do to experience 
his peace. Jesus' words is recorded in John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. God's peace isn't the same as a peaceful life. Our peace and comfort is in knowing that when we put our trust in him, he has us in his hands. All around us, we see people living stressed lives, especially people who lack options, who live day to day, and who are at the greatest risk when things go wrong. We see evidence of God's peace as people trust in God in the midst of their grief and loss. As communities work together to share food, supplies, and create jobs. As churches work with their communities and even other churches to find solutions to poverty and the isolation of the most vulnerable. We see evidence of God's peace as we pay attention to what he is doing and become involved in that. What opportunities might God be giving you today to do what leads to peace in your family, your work, your community? May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We lived in Lebanon for nine years and the situation was not that safe there for our children to stay. So we decided to move to Ukraine and he, he, he has done so many miracles helping us to move further and saved us from that huge explosion that happened in Lebanon. And when we arrived to Ukraine, it's been like uh, two years ago, and then uh, the war started in Ukraine. So we had to flee the country. We, uh, uh, God miraculously helped us to, to, to leave the place, and we moved to the Western Ukraine, and then we had to cross the border in Romania. Stayed 63 hours in the car and uh, trying just to, to reach the border and trying to, to get to the gas station. Like God was showing miracles, like in every, every small thing. Um, we were uh, waiting and like uh, we, we didn't know if we were gonna get to the first gas station as our car was out of gas. And uh, he just made people um, moving for, like letting us pass and just getting forward to get to, to that gas station and then the, the car broke in the middle of the night and the snowfall and we were just sitting, kids crying from cold and waiting and hoping that like God will just give his miracle, like just show us his hand and will lead us forward and then he sent the policeman that helped us to, to fix the car so we were able to cross the border to Romania and then here, just we were amazed with how how people were warm and welcome and provided for us. Like they, uh, there is a place here um, in the center where the ch local church organized and they helped us and um, they welcomed us in the room. And my husband was not able to stay with us as he's a foreigner, so uh, I had to stay here with the two kids. But just every day seeing that like doesn't matter what God is taking care of us. Our church uh, uh, had some damages from the air attacks. Uh, if you can pray for them, uh, they were like, they had to spread all over the world. And we're just meeting online, sometimes praying for each other. So if you can pray for them, because like people, um, my, I'm from Kyiv, and my church was in Irpin city. That's the place where Russians are trying to get to Kyiv through that city. So they destroyed most of the buildings, they destroyed most of the houses, hospitals, and my, my cousin is also there, so she had to live uh, with her babies underground, and uh, people in church had to, uh, they, they were providing food for whoever was able to come and live in the basement of the church. So just pray for people there, and generally for people in Ukraine, because we know that God will, will do great things. Um, among them and we're just really hoping for all of this to, to finish. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we turn to you in this season of our common distress. Our world is overtaken by unexpected calamity and by a host of attending fears, worries, and insecurities. We witness suffering, confusion, and hardship multiplied around us, and we find ourselves swept up in these same anxieties and troubles, dismayed by so many uncertainties. 
be merciful o christ to those who suffer to those who worry to those who grieve to those who are threatened or harm let your holy compassions be active throughout the world even now tending the afflicted comforting the broken hearted and bringing hope to many who are hopeless use even these hardships to draw our hearts nearer to you o oh god o oh god may these days become a catalyst for conviction and repentance for the tendering of our affections for the stirring of our sympathies for the refining of our love we are your people who are called by you we need not be troubled or alarmed indeed o oh lord let us love now more fearlessly remembering that you created us and called us to live in these very places in the midst of these unsettled times it is no surprise to you that we are here now sharing in this turmoil for you have called your children to live as salt and light among the nations praying and laboring for the flourishing of the communities where we dwell acting as agents of your forgiveness salvation healing reconciliation and hope in the very midst of an often troubled world and in these holy vocations you have not left us helpless o oh lord because you have not left us at all your spirit remains among us empower your children to live as your children in times of distress let us respond as those who would move in humble obedience toward the needs and hurts of their neighbors and communities you were not ashamed to share in our sufferings jesus let us now be willing to share in yours serving as your visible witnesses in this broken world hear now these words and be greatly encouraged the lord's throne in heaven is yet occupied his rule is eternal and his good purposes on earth will be forever accomplished so we need never be swayed by the brief and passing panics of this age you are the king of the ages o christ and history is held in your hands We your people know the good and glorious end of this story. Our heavenly hope is secure. Let us rest in the surpassing peace of that vision that your whole church on earth might be liberated to love more generously and sacrificially.
Thank you for being part of Solidarity Sunday. Let me conclude our service with this benediction. May the Lord bless and keep us. May he grant us strength to live through troubled times. May he fill us with grace that's equal to every need and his peace which passes all understanding. May he grant us the wisdom and the will to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with him. And may he surround us with his love and lead us in the paths of everlasting life. Amen.